Hello and welcome to Advanced Projections Economic Report for July of 2020. Here's our forecast reviews. As far as the economic environment is concerned, it should be clear to all that the single most influential factor by far is the pandemic and the form of responses to it. AP monitors the actual case and fatality counts from the data provided by two sources, Johns Hopkins and the New York Times. Their statistics vary slightly from one another, but both show the same levels and trends. In May, we said that U.S. cases could push as high as 3 million by July. As of our writing today, the actual number is 3.26 million. For the time being, the fatality rate is a bit more than 4%, but we expect that to push up again in the coming two months. In June, we said that global cases would likely reach 10 million and over 500,000 fatalities. Even though reporting from many of the larger countries is suspected for underreporting of their COVID statistics, the numbers as of this writing show global cases at 12.75 million with 565,000 fatalities. So things are clearly moving in a terrible direction and faster than even we originally anticipated. Our expectations for the remaining part of the summer through July and August are for U.S. cases to double to more than 6.5 million, with fatalities pushing through 250,000 perhaps to 300,000. Globally, cases will reach 25 plus million and perhaps as many as 1 million fatalities. There should be no doubt that this is a dire situation and it demands our responsible attention from many aspects. Pathogens are apolitical and do not succumb to rhetoric or happy talk. A strong resolve to address the matter head on is required. Resignation and or capitulation is going to be counterproductive. Ignoring the issue will also be counterproductive negative economic consequences such as reduced activity and higher regional unemployment will be reignited in the coming quarter. We will have to hope for a renewed situational control effort from governments as well as further injections of funds into the hands of those who require financial assistance. Science and reason are the weapons we must use to control this situation. Here's our current economic environment. We know a serious contraction began in mid-February. The National Bureau of Economic Research already stated on June 8th that a U.S. recession began in mid-February. So a Fed announcement six months from mid-February should be a foregone conclusion. Six months is a long time for any of us to wait for an official announcement from the government, so AP is dividing that six-month time period into three phases that we are calling recession phases one, two, and three, each two months in duration. Phase four is whatever happens after the official Fed announcement. Now, based upon the already acknowledged contraction beginning in the middle of first quarter 2020, we have already passed entirely, entirely through recession phase one in the latter half of April, and now at the end of June, we have passed entirely through recession phase two. The restoration of a limited number of social activities related to entertainment is not going to restore GDP growth. Housing, travel, education, energy, automotive, and manufacturing of large ticket items, airplanes for example, will be severely stunted for many more months. So recession phase three takes place over the remainder of the summer and should result in the expected announcement near the end of August. In June, unemployment levels declined again to a national level of 11.1%. However, within these improvements are some hard facts. Those returning to work were people temporarily furloughed from their jobs in mostly service industries, and a 
total of 7.5 million people returned to work in May and June. No new jobs were created. Many of the remaining temporary layoffs will likely become permanent ones. We anticipate that during the rest of the summer, these return to work gains will flatten and in the ensuing months, unemployment will pick back up, returning to the 12 to 15% area where it will stubbornly remain throughout the rest of the year. The economies of the largest states in the South and West Florida, Texas, Arizona, California, and others are pausing their reopenings and will be forced to dial back many activities as COVID infections spike further in states representing more than one-third of the population of the country. Here's where our individual indicators stand. As our APSI indicator looks at the relationship between current month and equity closes from four months back, it has gone green for this month's report, just as we anticipated in last month's update. This temporary upward change in status is still possible for August. Employment happy talk continued to fuel the equities markets as investors grasped at straws of hope for a miraculous V-shaped recovery and a return to normalcy. We may still see the markets push back entirely to their old February highs based on this speculation. As driven by the hopes implicit in the June employment reports, equities did react with more upward movement, but we expect more fundamental and more sobering information is eventually going to be released and will put a pin in this bubble of false hope. This is very likely to be the coincidence of dismal second quarter earnings reports and forward guidances and a worsening picture of the pandemic's spread. To us, this continues to represent an opportunity to convert to more cash. Second quarter earnings expected to be down at least 40% year over year are going to be reported in July and August. The disconnect between the equities markets and the underlying realities in the economy will eventually be resolved over the remains of this summer. Second quarter corporate earnings reported been to late summer as well as the virtual certainty Federal Reserve declaration of a recession by late summer will provide a huge splash of cold water onto any further market exuberance. Due to the collapsing yield curve, our APYC indicator remains yellow for June. The May LEIs from the conference board improved slightly, but for this July report, our APLI indicator remains solidly red. Gold spent much of the time above $1,700 per ounce in June, and now in early July first penetrated the $1,800 mark, establishing its new highest levels in more than eight years. Month-end pricing for gold and rhodium still puts our APPM indicator well into the red for the time being. As rhodium prices eventually move down relative to gold over the coming months, that indicator should go yellow and then green. We expect decade plus highs for gold and silver over the next couple of years. Our early warning APMS for money supply remains solidly green as the Fed continues to pump money into the money supply at record levels, supporting the government's financial stimulus package and outlays that will be totaling well over $2 trillion, with even more being hinted at by Congress. Contrary to a lot of uninformed opinion by investors, the Fed is not buying equities, but it has taken its downward course on interest rates all the way back to near zero and has committed to a series of ongoing steps designed to pump money into the money supply and the rest of the economic system. During May, the Fed has be officially become the third largest holder of corporate debt in the two largest corporate debt ETFs. During May alone, the money supply went up a full $700 billion on top of a $1.1 trillion increase in April, the two largest increases in history by far. This is great for what the Fed Chairman 
uh, Powell claims is liquidity and stability in the financial markets. But these large infusions of cash are not going to places where they will be rapidly spent and hence do not provide the necessary velocity of money to drive the GDP up. When the Fed finally reports on GDP and the velocity of money for the second quarter, we expect precipitous declines in both. The Federal Reserve's weekly aggregate of measure of economic stability has put us into a red recession warning for our APFD indicator for four months running. Over the past six recessions, this indicator has been highly reliable in its ability to confirm that a recession is on the way. And of course, as we have said, this one has already begun. So in summary, this is what the situation is. Only two of our six indicators are in green territory. We are keeping our probability of a near-term recession occurring to 100%. We calculate that the actual onset of recession had already begun around 16 weeks ago, a fact confirmed by the NBER and will become officially declared by the Federal Reserve late in the summer. Further modifications to this scenario will depend on what happens in the days and weeks ahead, but events are highly unlikely to change the outcome of what has already been set in motion. Reviewing the events leading up to the Great Recession, there was a brief rebound before the serious declines of late 2008, so a rebound here is certainly possible, but within the context of an unbelievably risky economy, just as before. Some final notes. As of this writing, losses from the S&P 500's peak of 33.93 were only about 9% but we think that they are eventually going to be much more severe than that, reaching 55 to 65% down into the 1200 to 1500 range, whenever the bottom is finally going to be put in, probably in the depths of the recession late this year or into 2021. If you are not risk tolerant over the long term or cannot wait the usual five to six years of recovery time, that equity indexes typically take to get back to break even, you should not have any raw exposure in the equities markets at this time. It would be best to be on the sidelines and wait for the worst to come and go, waiting to get an all clear signal from our indicators as to a much safer re-entry point. Remember the principles of capital preservation and risk management that must underpin every serious investment strategy. Our current economic problems will not go away until COVID is under firm control, rather than getting much worse as it is happening now. Risk takers who lose 50% must follow up with 100% gains to simply break even. If they lose 65%, they must follow up with 200% gains simply to break even. So please, be realistic in your outlook and planning. You will not miss out on anything truly big by being a rational and conservative investor at this time. That's our report for July. We hope you stay safe and healthy during the rest of this month, and we'll talk to you again at the beginning of August. <music>